Hello everyone, I'm Bartolo for Gallery Teachers and uh, we are producing a series of videos about TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. If you think you have something important to say to the TEFL community, you can write an article for our blog or you want to get interviewed on uh, this channel, please write at us at editorial at galleryteachers.com and we'll get in touch with you. Some of these videos will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. So if uh, it's your first time with us, please subscribe. The rest of the videos, the majority of them, are on our website, available for our pro members. Today we have a special guest. He is an English teacher at the University of Bologna in Italy, and he is also a very talented writer for our blog. He is a very respected musician and author of songs, and the owner of the company fansongs.co.uk. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Charles Goodger. My first question is not really a question for you, it's more of a typical situation for not native English teachers like me. I started to become passionate about English when I was um, at university in Italy. I moved to London and uh, I did many things. Then I started teaching Italian in a London-based school. I took a qualification to teach English and this has been uh, the result of a very long path. While getting into uh, teaching English for native speakers was more of uh, an easy way to get a job. So even if uh, we foreigners had studied English and we have studied how to teach English and the grammar, we sometimes feel like we are imposters. Based on uh, your experience, is this a real issue? It's also a similar problem that I have. I mentioned it actually in the... Um... No, I didn't, that's right. I, I started to divulge um, from the main theme of the article that I sent you yesterday, writing about my experiences going into Italian schools where they teach English and the um, sometimes absurd and even comical aspect of uh, uh, teachers running away from me because they're scared that I'm going to embarrass them in front of, of parents or you know, other colleagues by correcting their English. And uh, this is um, an aspect, um, a syndrome that we have, in, especially in, uh, in primary schools here in Italy. What's your opinion in general about teaching English abroad? I think well, it depends. I mean, certainly I can talk about the reality of Italy and in particular Emilia Romagna, which is where I, I live. I live in Bologna, uh, which is the capital of Emilia Romagna. It's one of the largest regions in Italy. And I'm not really sure how representative the situation here in Emilia Romagna, Italy, is of um, the general English language primary school situation around the world but I'm, I think it's fairly similar in different countries, basically for the simple reason that the people who provide the money for English language tuition aren't educationalists, they are politicians who don't really understand often what it takes, what you need to be an effective teacher or primary school teacher of young learners with regard to English. And so often the decisions about how English is organized in primary schools, certainly in um, Italy, this is the case, have created a situation in which you have people going into the classroom and teaching the language, but they're not really able to speak it. Uh, they, they have done a 500 hour course, and in theory they have reached the level, but once they are thrust into the classroom, there's no real monitoring of what goes on. And uh, in my experience, uh, very few of these um, teachers are able to have a proper conversation, let alone teach children English in an effective way. So what do you think about the discrimination between uh, native versus non-native English speakers? I um, believe that the time has come for parents to stop thinking about mother tongue or native speakers of English as the teachers who should be teaching their children or in general, not only uh, children, but adults. Italy is your country now. Can you tell us about uh, the difficulties you faced? I work at Bologna University and we have a team of language experts made up of a team of mother tongue people, but all of us in the team can speak Italian fluently like me. And so 
we have the advantage of being able to understand the problems that Italian people have coming to English, which a mother tongue teacher, however well-trained, however highly qualified with a, a CELTA qualification, the disadvantage for a teacher, a mother tongue teacher who doesn't understand the language of the people that uh, she's teaching is you don't understand the problems that uh, learners from a different language have to the language. So yes, it is good to have a mother tongue teacher from the perspective of phonology, from pronunciation. This is a whole area of language teaching which has to be studied in a way apart from the grammar and the uh, acquisition of vocabulary, the enrichment of lexis. Pronunciation is, is, is really important, but it's important to the extent of teaching students what we call, or what I call, intelligible pronunciation. In other words, pronunciation that is correct enough to be able to be understood by anybody who is speaking the language. And of course, a mother tongue teacher who um, understands the uh, phonetic difficulties that his or her students have with English is in a much better position. What do you think is the situation of uh, the English teaching industry compared to the past? Um, I've been around, I'm 65, uh, and I've been teaching English, uh, I suppose, well, for more than 30 years, more than 30 years even. Um, so I've seen a development in the whole, if you like, English language teaching and learning industry, because it is an industry. There's a lot of money in English from certain perspectives, certainly not for teachers. I mean, if you want to get it, if you want to make a lot of money, don't go into English teaching. <laughs> Uh, unless you have a publishing company which is very successful on the internet or with its course books or you have a, a language school but even that now language schools are closing like they're falling like dead flies and so however having said that the economic aspects unfortunately like so many things in life uh, do affect English teaching uh, and it goes back to the policies of politicians ministries of education how many resources or basically how much money is available to um, education um, authorities for language teachers for teacher training how children learn and how they're taught I can tell you this, I've been teaching at Bologna University since 2001, so it's quite a long time. I can remember back in 2002, 2003, we had a lot of students coming into the university courses and the language courses we provide at Bologna University are for everybody, whatever faculty, whether you're studying law, engineering, physics, astrophysics, medicine, all the subjects that Bologna University teaches, which is uh, a large range of subjects. We had people coming in who couldn't really say anything in English because they hadn't had the chance to study it at primary school. But um, gradually, as the years go by, we've seen a, an improvement in the level of uh, students coming to courses at Bologna University, which is partly due to the fact that English has been introduced or was introduced into the primary school system from the late 1990s. Now, um, I must also say that I do know many students who have studied English all their scholastic life and they come out of school and they're not able to say anything. They've been badly taught teaching English in Italy. It's, uh, you know, it could be a lot better. Italy, I think, is behind. If you look at how um, well young people in countries like uh, Scandinavia or Holland, Germany as well, there's no real comparison. Yes, it's uh, strange if you think about it, that in uh, northern and uh, eastern countries they speak English fluently, while in the south we are behind. Um, Italy, Spain, uh, France. Britain. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there are three reasons basically for this. One reason is the fact that in the Nordic countries, maybe not so much German, Germany, but certainly in Scandinavia and Holland and other countries, um, there, there's no dubbing. You know, the, the films uh, in English from America, from Hollywood, from, from all over, in English with subtitles. There is more exposure from an early age. This, this helps a lot. Another um, reason is possibly the fact that English is closer, or there are some elements in English basic English grammar, which are closer to more Germanic languages than, than Mediterranean languages. But having said that, English is a hybrid language 
with a lot of Latin in it too. And um, uh, a nationalistic thing, and certainly in France, I mean, they've had to, they've always felt that fr French should be the international language. And I don't think many French people are very happy about the fact that uh, English has become the lingua franca, but now younger people in France have accepted that. You teach at uh, the University of Bologna in Italy. Could you give us some advice on uh, how to become a teacher in an Italian university? Okay, yeah, sure, sure. It's not easy. <laughs> Um, and I got into it purely by, by chance because I already had my own business here in Italy teaching English through music, fun songs, uh, which was doing really well. And my wife, who, as I said, Italian, she saw an advertisement in a newspaper um, for um, what they call un concorso. The word concorso is usually translated into English as a competition. And this is how you get a job in the uh, public administration working for the state in Italy, you have uh, to um, compete against other people on a points basis. The way that you get points depends on a number of different factors. In my particular case, I, was, uh, I had the advantage of having a lot of points from the English language course books that I'd written, because before I was writing as a, as a course book writer for some of the top uh, Italian publishers I wrote for Longmans, uh, Mondadori, and so this counted and I was able to get into the um, final five or six people to be interviewed and I got the job. But uh, it's certainly not like in England where you can apply, you get an interview, if they like you, they give you the job. Here in Italy, everything is very carefully controlled in this uh, concorso system. They, they announce them from time to time. And then the contract that you get, if you win the uh, concorso, the competition, varies. I was lucky because at that time, uh, they really needed to set up a group of teachers. And uh, so there were some positions. But now, to save money, they, they prefer to do contracts, which last maybe for six months or for a year. But I was able to get in on, a, on a, um, an agreement which gave me a job for, for life, basically, in all the benefits of a pension. And I'll, get, I'll be getting a pension from the Italian state. I'm not even an Italian citizen, which is, <laughs> um, yeah. So um, in that case, I think I was quite lucky. If specifically you're interested in working as an English teacher in an Italian university, you just need to keep an eye on the website and they mount these competitions every so often. And I know that for the Language Centre in Bologna, there will be the need for um, some um, teachers quite soon. Thank you, Charles. It's been uh, really nice to talk to you. We will have another conversation about how you can combine your interest in uh, music with uh, teaching English. Mm -hmm. If you want to listen to our next interview with uh, Charles Kudger, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's all for today. Thank you for being with us and uh, happy teaching and happy learning.